here we have Christian Weatherspoon here. We're going to talk to you about getting started as a newer real estate investor. What are some of the drawbacks and roadblocks and challenges that you might run into, common pitfalls, and you know some of the initial steps you might want to take as you're starting out in your real estate investing journeys. I get this question all the time. Like, do I need an LLC? Do I need a company? And if I do, where do I go? How do I get established? I always say this, and it's because I heard this quote from Richard Branson. If I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. That's for sure. Right? And the, the truth is, I don't need to know any of that stuff. I have a cursory knowledge of it, and I'm gonna share it with you right now. But the main point is align yourself with an expert who can help set up a company for you. The very first company I started, I started on LegalZoom. It was an LLC in California, and I just went through the steps, checked the boxes I was supposed to check, checked the tax selection, and then got my entity set up and said, okay, cool, I'm gonna, when I start to buy properties, buy it in the name of my LLC. The truth is, you don't need to. Now, there's reasons why you want to, and I'll explain that. However, you don't need an LLC or a business to invest in real estate. You could do it in your own name. You know, you can do it in multiple people's names. Which to be clear, that's not what we're recommending. So please don't go out and start doing real estate investing in your own name and then come back and be like, oh, Chris and Christian on Real Estate Investing Made Easy said, yeah. you don't need to set up an entity right. or an LLC to start real estate Legally. investing. Legally, right. it is not a requirement yeah. to get started. I know plenty of people that they got their start doing one or two or three, maybe even more transactions just in their own personal name. You know, at the end of the day, you have to weigh out the risk versus the reward, right? You know, so let's just kind of look at two different scenarios. Let's say you are fresh out of high school and you just got your high school diploma and you're just getting started. You have no money to your name, or maybe you went to college for a little bit, maybe even graduated, and you have a lot of debt in your name. You don't own a home, you, you own a crappy car, you have no assets or anything. Really, the purpose of an LLC is to protect your assets so in the event that you get sued. So mm -hmm. in a situation where you don't have any assets for somebody to come after, an attorney, when they're presented an opportunity to come and sue you for something, whether it was something yeah. you did right or wrong, they're gonna look at you and say, you have nothing to take. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. But what I do have is $2 and a Casio wristwatch. You can have one of them. If anything, you have debt to take. And I'm sure you would gladly hand over your debt if that's what they want, but you have nothing but debt, right? So it doesn't really make much of a difference whether you're set up in an LLC or not. Now, let's position this differently. Let's say, you know, you're somebody who, you know, went to college, put all the time in energy effort and became a doctor, you know, spent 12 years in college. Maybe you're a neurosurgeon and you've made a ton of money. You have multiple properties. You have a vacation property. You have a main house. You have all these different assets, big 401k, all these different things, right? Well, you know, if I'm an attorney and somebody presents an opportunity to sue you for something, well, now that looks like a lot more reason to go after you and spend my time, energy and effort to try to track you down and get some money out of you, right? So in that scenario, an LLC would be way more beneficial, if not a larger corporate structure that would protect those assets that you have. So in the event that somebody tries to sue you, they can't acquire any of those assets and take the things that you spent a lot of time, energy and effort to earn over the years. Yeah. And some tips about the structure of your entity that I can share with you come with this caveat. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. I'm not licensed in that capacity to give legal advice, nor am I a financial advisor. So with that disclaimer, just know when I say we need to leverage the expertise of our team, which is the whole point of if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. That's what I want to underscore. And how to get started in real estate investing, we'll go under the, the assumption that you're gonna to wanna to set up an entity and it's this way, right? You could do it in LegalZoom, that's fine. I would begin by actually going to RIAs, going to meetups in your area and networking and you can let them know, hey, I am gonna set up my entity. I'm curious who did you use in the area? And then find a good attorney, somebody who can facilitate that for you. And I'll tell you, as we talked about 
the worth its weight in gold, a good attorney that's a real estate attorney is worth their weight in gold just as much as contractors are too. So you want somebody in your corner that's able to guide you through and navigate you through the complexities of things that you just don't know, even when you're an expert, when you become an expert, because you don't want to be an expert at everything. Believe me, that puts too much on your plate. It's not scalable. It's not sustainable. You're going to burn out. And then it's so much easier to lose sight as to why you got into this business in the first place. 100%. Really, once you've set up your entity, which of course I would go in my personal opinion with Arizona and Nevada, um, even investing in California, I would then focus my attention on what am I going to do? You can start with wholesaling. I would recommend that it's the easiest thing to do in the real estate investing business and then aligning yourself with the right people and just to take note of who those right people are. So at the end of the day, there's resources out there, many of which are paid, but many of which are free. And it might surprise you how many people are in the group pace subject to pace Morby would call a go giver. So they're just really interested in helping other people because rising tides raise all ships. Help is on the way dear. If you have any questions at all about that or any of this in the video that you've heard, please leave it in the comment section below and we're happy to respond to you as quick as we can. Awesome. You guys take it easy and uh, we'll stay tuned for the next video so you can learn more about how to make real estate investing easy.